So it, it, we want to have an encounter with God this week. That's what experience is, an encounter. We want to have an encounter with God. But it said you're going to have an encounter because you're going to get involved. You got to be exposed to it. You know, saying I'm going to have an encounter and be at home is not going to work. You're going to have to press your way to get where the encounter is taking place. So he said, this is what I wrote down. It says, experiencing is a personal encounter or undergoing something through environment in or exposed to it. So you're going to have to be exposed. You're going to have to be uh, in that place where uh, the encounter is going on. And then I looked up the word wave, waves. You know, I always think about waves when I go out to on the beach. And you know, I'd be looking at God's glory. And I'd be looking how the waves come in and how the waves go out. The waves come in and the waves go out. But the amazingest thing about waves is they only go and go so far. And then they go back. My God. And so I was just thinking about the waves of God's glory. That this week, God going to come in, <laughs> God's going to come in, and God's going to be going out. God's going to be coming in, and God's going gonna to be experiencing. It's going to go from one level to the next level. I want you all to receive this today because I've seen this in the realm of the spirit. I'm not telling you something that I thought of, but I birthed this, and God showed it to me. And then you're talking about experiencing uh, the waves of God's glory. When I think about glory, when I think about glory, I think about a, the brightness, the, the magnificent of God's presence. I think about, you know, just being in God's presence. And uh, glory represents God's presence. And then glory represents God's power. It represents the supernaturalness of the almighty God. Mm. And so this week, people, I want you to know, you're going to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You're going to have an encounter. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all got to hear this. You're going to have an encounter with God. And the thing that God showed me, just like when, the praise team, I, I thought that was so befitting and so awesome. How the atmosphere had to be shifted. God said the atmosphere of praise and worship is going to be shifted in our lives this week. Praise is not going to be like it normally is. We, it's going to go to another level. I don't want to get ahead of myself. And so this morning... That's what the theme of the uh, conference is, is experiencing the waves of God's glory. But my, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 29, to the theme scriptures. You know, this entire, I, I couldn't just put the whole, we couldn't just put the whole chapter. We, we try to pick out some scriptures, but it's the whole scriptures, chapter, the whole chapter. It's not just one verse, it's the entire chapter. I'm going to be talking about today the powerful voice of God. The powerful voice of God. And let me, uh, before I go to Psalm chapter 29, as I was telling you all on last week, I don't think it's an accident that two prophets are going to be in the house. I think it's ordained. I think it's appointed by God that two mouthpieces will be in the house. And God this morning in his greatness and his mercy, he took me to this. I want, I want to read this to you out of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, chapter 23. And it says in verse 28 through 29, it says the prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream. And he, he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. 
What is the chaff to the wheat, said the Lord. He said, is not my word like as a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in pieces. He said, a prophet going to speak. And God said to me this morning, he said, that's what's going to be speaking in this conference. It's my prophetic voices. And I've already given them dreams. They've already seen their purpose of why they're going to be at this conference. They've already seen it. And so what they're going to do, they're going to come in and they're going to prophesy what God has already told them. The powerful voice of God is going to be speaking because there are some voices. There are some voices. I want you all to know, I'm sure you already know, that some people's voice are more anointed than other people. And it's not because, you know, no, nothing. It's just that some people's voice can get more done than some other people's voice can. But God said, I've sent you two prophetic voices that I have anointed for this hour and for this season. And he said, I need you to pay very close attention to what they will be prophesying this week. Because if you grab hold to it, you're going to see that manifested in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's turn to Psalm chapter 29. And we're going to read, begin reading in verse 1. It says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And so that's what we was doing this morning. We were giving unto the Lord the glory that was due his name. And we were worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness. There is something about when the body of Christ come together and we begin to worship God in the beauty of holiness. We're going to see God move like never before when we begin to worship God in the beauty of holiness. That means that I'm going to get myself right before I come before my Father, before I begin to worship my God. I'm going to put my hands up, and I'm going to say, God, whatever I've done wrong, I repent of it. And, Lord God, I want to worship you right now in the beauty of holiness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Now, I want you all to hear this. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundered. The water is upon many. The Lord is upon many waters. My God. You know how God spoke to Moses and the people heard thundering and lightning. My God, there's something about the voice of God. The power, the glory of God's voice, it thunders. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty, majestic. My God, God's voice. And God, as I was meditating on this this morning, God stopped me. And God said to me, he said, Selena, he said, you have that same ability in you. I need y'all to receive this. He said, because my word is my voice. He's saying, when you speak my word, that means my voice is being spoken in the earth. Wow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. We don't realize the power that God has invested in us. But he say his voice is like the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Have you ever just been out and looking at the water? And all you see is water, 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 water. And you're looking at all that water. And you know God spoke that water into existence. And God, not only did he speak it into existence, he told that water how far you can go and how far not to move. My God. The power that's in the voice of God. That means the power that's on the inside of us. And we got to learn how to use Open our mouths and begin to use that power. It says, the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. 
Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Now, can you imagine that tree is a powerful tree? But it says that the voice of the Lord can break it. My God. So God, it's nothing. It's nothing, people, that is going on in our lives that the voice of God can't break. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I got so excited as I was just reading this. And I was just thinking about the voice of God, the voice of God, and God's word. God, when I put voice to God's word, I'm like God speaking. Come on, I'm going to keep saying that today because I want you to get a revelation of that. And that way we won't be saying any and everything. We won't get, be getting in agreement with any and everything. That don't, that's not God's word. I'm not getting in agreement with that. Oh, my God, my God, my God. And it says that uh, the voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. In other words, the voice of the Lord controls the flames of fire. God's voice, <laughs> glory to God, hallelujah. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wilderness have to bow when, when, when God speak. Fire have to uh, separate, it have to divide when God speak. My God, that's why Jeremiah says it's like fire shut up in my bone. That's why the word of God needs to be in our bone. So when we open our mouths, it can come out like fire. Fire shut up in my bone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah said, I wanted not to speak. I was tired of people talking about me. So I'm just going to shut my mouth. But Jeremiah said, it was like fire shut up in my bone. I had to open my mouth and prophesy what thus say the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The voice of the Lord maketh the hind to calf and discovereth the forest. And it's in his temple does everyone speak of his glory. My God, in his temple. Why should we speak of something else beside God's glory in his temple? Why should we exalt anybody else in God's temple beside him? My God, my God, my God. The Lord set it upon the flood. Yea, the Lord set it kings forever. King forever. The Lord is enthroned. His throne, he's enthroned upon the flood. So in other words, you know, I don't care how much go on. God, 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 God's word, God's voice can take control of it. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, that's why the word of God say the word of God is quick. It's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. All we got to do is learn how to use the sword. We got to open our mouths and learn how to use the sword. We got to open our mouths and learn how to use the sword. The word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. My God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It said it is the spirit. It is the spirit that quicken it. Uh, uh, the, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You know, have you ever, I, I don't know, I, I've been this way. Uh, I can remember one time I was down and out, and I can remember a prophet calling me forth, and he began to prophesy to me. And the more he prophesied to me, the more life came in me because the, he was speaking God's word into me. That's what God said we should be able to do. When we see somebody down and out, we should be able to prophesy life into them. That's why God tells us that when you prophesy, you exhort, you encourage, you edify. I'm speaking life into you. You may be down, but I'm going to speak life into you today. You're going to come up out of that place. You're going to know that not only can I speak life into you, but you can speak life into somebody else. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter where you are today, you're not going to leave out of here. If you make up your mind, I do not want to leave out of here like I came. I want to be changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will be changed this day. You cannot come in the presence of God and desire something and not get it. You've got to press into God like never before. We've got to learn how to make a demand. We've got to learn how to tap in to the word of God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it said, the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. And they started singing about that peace today. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. I don't care what circumstance, I don't care what situation is going on in your life, God still wants you to have peace. Glory to God. I'll say that again. I don't care what is going on in your life. God still is the God of peace. And God wants us to walk in peace. Even though hell may be trying to knock you over, God still have peace for you today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When we realize the God, the almighty God, the powerful God that we serve. A lot of things that we are losing sleep over, we wouldn't lose sleep over it. Because I know my God got it. I'm not going to lose sleep over what the devil is doing. I'm going to rejoice over what God is doing. And I'm going to see everything that the devil is doing being turned around for my good. Why? Because the voice of the God say so. God say what the devil means for evil. He say, I'll take that thing and I'll turn it around for your good. So that means no matter what's going on, I don't care if your husband is acting crazy. I don't care if your wife acting crazy. God say, I will perfect those things that concern you. So your marriage concerns you. Your children concerns you. God's going to perfect it. So I'm going to speak the word of God. I'm going to give voice to the word of God. And I'm going to see the manifestation of what I desire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so this is what I wrote down. Just as the flood waters came in the natural and washed away a lot, a lot of our natural possession, <laughs> the waves of the Holy Ghost will be washing away in our lives that things that, things that are bad, and some things that are good, but they're bad with God. <laughs> I was asked to say it again. God is going to be washing away things in our lives that are bad and things in our lives that we don't know is bad. <laughs> God's going to wash those things away too. I believe and with every fiber of my being, that just like the waters cover the natural earth, God's glory is covering in the spirit realm and it's going to come down to the earth. And we're going to see God's glory move on this, uh, this earth like never before. That's why I believe God wants the body of Christ to be encouraged. You need to be encouraged so you can encourage somebody else that's down and out. You need to be encouraged to the place where he said the goodness of God leadeth men to repentance. And so if you go and tell somebody, yeah, my house flooded too, but you know God is the joy and he's the strength of my life. And everything that I've lost, I'm going to get it back and I'm going to get back more beside. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that with every fiber of my being. From the very moment that I found our living word flooded, I rejoiced. I rejoiced in my God because, like I said before, before we had to stop because we didn't have no money to finish what we wanted to do. But I believe this time, God is not going to allow us to stop. We're going to go all the way and fix everything, and it's going to look much better than it did before. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I'm always thinking about that commercial when it say, don't let the devil see you sweat. <laughs> I'm not going to let the devil see me sweat. I'm not going to let him see me sweat. I'm not going to sweat over what he did. I'm not going to sweat over him because in the end, I'm going to have the last laugh. When I walk back into LWC and the devil see how we're going to be praising God in that new building, he's going to wish he had never put his hands on us. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. I need somebody to get in agreement. With. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sometime. You know, I, I was telling uh, Pastor Margaret this the other day. Sometime, you know, you don't know what the devil is doing. You know, you, you don't know what he's doing. He's doing that, and, and God have to expose the devil. You know, I, I, the pastor called me one day, and he was talking to me about he had to call the roofer back in, and he called the roofer back in. How many of you know we had uh, uh, already uh, 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 called the exterminators in for termites? And how many of you know that we thought we had all the termites was gone? But anyway, when uh, the flood came, it was exposed. It, it was exposed that the devil had come back with some old termites. And so that meant that the part of the roof that we hadn't done before, it's an opportunity now to get the other part of the roof, roof done. Glory to God. You never know what God is doing, people. You never know what God is doing. But we thinking because the termite man said there was no ter more termites, we believed the man. But it was more termites. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm, talking to, I'm, I'm trying to encourage you people. That any time the devil is doing something, God can always do something greater. Glory to God. So my voice is going to be speaking what God is doing. I'm not going to be speaking what the devil is doing. I'm going to be speaking what my God is doing. God is doing great and mighty things. Great and mighty things. Living Word got another $1,000 check in the mail this week. God is doing great and mighty things. Coming from people we don't even know. But God is doing great and mighty things. And then you think I'm going to sit around and I'm going to complain and be down and out because of the devil. I think not. And I just want to encourage each and every one of you. I want to encourage you. Let God expose everything that needs to be exposed. Just like he exposed the termites in that building that we didn't know was still there. There are some things in your life <laughs> that you need to tell God, it's something in my life that you need to expose that I don't even know is here. But I need it exposed. You know, because sometimes, you know, you're thinking you're all right. <laughs> you think you got it going on. You think you miss it. You miss the right. You think things is all right. And then somebody come along and push your wrong button. And that demon jump out. You say, my God, I thought I got rid of you five years ago. But he's still there. And so God want to expose that demon to you now. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so that's what I'm asking God. I'm asking God during this conference, I want to be new. I want to be made new. I want to be made over again. I want to be made over again. I want to be made new. I want God to make, in, in Psum 29 and 11, in the um, one of Amplified, I mean, uh, yeah, Amplified Bible, it said God makes his people strong. God gives his people peace. So how many of you want to be made strong? You want all the weakness gone out of your life. You want strength to enter in where the weakness is. Healing to enter in where disease is. You want prosperity to enter in where there is poverty. You want to be made new in every area. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that we are yielding. Come on, y'all. I want to come on, praise team. I need you to come on back because we're going to yield to God. We're going to, we're going to yield. We're going to yield to God. It says, oh, give, give unto the Lord praise that do his name. And I don't want anybody to hold back on God today. I want you to worship God. I'm quitting early, so you don't have to, you got plenty of time. Don't look at no watch. We don't want no clock watching.